moving on to just some of the high yield anatomy that you should know about the femoral necks. Can you can we speak on some of that as well? Yeah, sure. So you know, I th I think this femoral neck angle is something something that we don't necessarily talk a lot about, but it's something that you can really um, you can really think a lot about when you're trying uh, when you're treating these injuries. Um, as you have up on your on your screen, 130 to 135, that's our normal angle, and that's where that's where probably you know if you're not in a uh, if you're not in a really busy uh, trauma center, that might be what you have from an from an implant standpoint. If you're talking about sliding hip screws or um, or femoral nails, they may, they probably have a 135 degree neck angle implant. Um, and for a lot of people, that's okay. But if you have somebody who has that higher angle, um, that valgus neck, um, it's really important to kind of, it's one of the reasons why it's important to look at the other side, because then you may need to talk to your rep ahead of time and say, hey, um, in my slide and hip screw, um, do I have a 140 neck angle? Um, or did you bring the 140, um, plates because they may not bring them with them every time mm -hmm. and if you have something that matches that normal anatomy for that person then it's going to be a lot easier to get that ever important uh tip apex distance when you're trying to uh when you're trying to get good fixation and prevent cutout so i think thinking about yeah 130 is normal but not everybody's 130 um some people are going to be 140 and some people are going to be 120 um, and understanding the implant systems that you use and what you have available to you to fix these fractures will make it a lot easier if you've thought about that ahead of time. Uh, the, uh, the other one that I think is, is good to think about is your antiversion. So these, um, the femoral head is antiverted, it's supposed to be that way. And if you're fixing a fracture and you're looking at your lateral view, and you don't and you don't see that antiversion. You don't see um, a good anterior scallop on your femoral neck. Then you you've probably malreduced your femoral neck. So I think it's it's really important to think about it in that in that setting to to understand. Um, another thing to sort of help you cheat with your with your version, your varus valgus, is to sort of look at where the head is in relationship to the trochanters. Um, and trying to match that side to side can help you be a quick view of what your uh, what your femoral neck angle is doing. Right, right. Yeah, I think those are all uh, important points and definitely remembering, you know, basic anatomy and using that to help kind of guide your implant choice, especially with these, you know, you don't, this may be an over-exaggeration, but if you had a plate that was 150 degrees and somebody had a femoral neck angle that's maybe 125 it may not be the the right implant for that patient so i definitely see where that can come into play um can you kind of touch a little bit just a quick base on some of the trabecular lines and you know one of the things i know you kind of hear about like the sing index um sometimes any any importance of that for regarding like femoral neck fractures yeah i mean i to me i think the one thing that i really think about when i see this is these trabeculae can, can give you um, a little bit of an indication for the, the health of the bone, first of all. Um, but second of all, they can be that sort of second cortical line to help you see where your, where your, where your um, fracture fragments are lined up. So is the neck lined up with the, uh, with the inner trunk region or the subcapital region? So to me, they're sort of a helpful read here and there. I don't know that we really get too, too into the weeds with these sing indexes very frequently, but I guess it's uh, the, the more rare, the more rare, or the more information that's available, the easier it is to write a question about, I guess. So. Right. And, um, and, and we know one of the big things about the femoral neck is kind of like the blood supply and, you know, it's a big, um, uh, you know, distinction, like whether it's, you know, intracapsular versus extracapsular and the importance of that and, and how it, you know, plays into non-unions. Can you kind of just go over the, the blood supply for the femoral neck and why this is important in these types of fractures? 
Yeah, sure. So um, I think I think you hit on it. Once you you have the you have the two medial the two circumflex the medial and lateral circumflex. We know that a large portion of that blood supply um, comes off of that lateral circumflex. It's sort of newer information, I guess. Um, but after we get off of those circumflex arteries, we're really dealing with a pretty um, a pretty small and tenuous blood supply. So you see all those, all those uh, small vessels that kind of rise up the neck there, um, penetrate the capsule and, and supply the head. For adults, we've lost, the, we've lost that ligamentum blood supply. That's not really, that's not really anything in, in an adult. So um, the blood vessels are small, they're easy to kink, um, if the fracture is displaced for a significant amount of time or you have something associated with a, uh, with a dislocation, then, then we know that the, those, blood, those blood supply becoming uh, disrupted is highly likely in that femoral neck region.